Good evening. Welcome to the Shadow Trader Video Weekly for Sunday, November 11, 2007. Let's get this overall volume matrix out of the way first. Those of you joining us for the first time, this is the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P. Closing figures each day. Same numbers you get on radio and TV. Red and green should be self-explanatory. The only day the market went up this week was Tuesday. As you can see, the market got a major smackdown on Wednesday, smackdown again on Friday. Uh, overall volume here, this is a percentage increase or decrease on the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ uh, in percentage terms over the prior day. The main thing to consider here is that on Wednesday and Thursday, we put in two solid distribution days as volume was up sharply on the New York Stock Exchange both days. And price also went down, as you can see. So we had two days of distribution here, relatively heavy on Friday, and this is really interesting, and I do think this is kind of a bearish relationship as well in terms of price volume. Markets went down a lot, but most of the move on Friday was in the initial gap down and then in the last 30 minutes of trade, and we're going to get into an S&P chart in a second showing you this, and volume was low. So most of the day on Friday, and I'll show you right here on a chart, the market actually just went sideways to up here, and volume was actually low. So that's kind of bearish because the market was really going up most of the day, except that here in the last 30 minutes of trade, the market got smacked. Now, what's going on in the bigger picture here is really interesting because if you look at this 60-minute chart here, there was firm indication of bottoming here on Thursday. And I'll go back to the 15 to show you here. This, was, this action here on Thursday, right here at the lows of the 1450, was an exact 61.8 retracement on your daily charts of the entire up move from the last swing lows, which would be here. Look at this. You go up like this, and look at the 61.8. Look where it is. See? Right there at the low. Right? So you know you've got a 61.8 FIBO right here, and we'll delete that. We'll go back to the intraday chart. You know you got a 61.8 FIBO. Market comes right to it, makes a reversal, okay? And this is still Thursday. All this is Thursday. Puts in the first higher low that looks like it's about to hold of the move and it holds and it goes up big and while it's going up like that look what the breath does this is the relationship between the up volume and down volume it confirms right for intraday trading we look for divergences in the breath to tip us off but here it confirms and the move was very strong so the thinking in the markets is on Thursday night that if the market can move over the 1480 the next day there's some buying opportunities here. But what, ha what happens instead is that the bears wake up cranky <laughs> on uh, Friday morning and gap the market down about 17. Market then retests the lows here, goes sideways to up, and then in the last 30 minutes, the trade sells off hard and almost goes right back to the 1450 Fibo area. So what does this indicate to us on the dailies? Excuse me, as we know that that, for, that 618 is the last possible, you know, bastion of support for the bulls. It's like the last line in the sand for them. We've, we are now threatening to move below it again. The odds are strong that we could fill up the triangle here and go all the way back to the 1400 or just sub 1400, anywhere in this 1380 to 1410 area. And that's what it's looking like, like right now. The other thing that's bearish about what's going on is that the Thursday action strength was a bottoming tail hammer, right? And now that shadow is about to be violated to the downside. And that's what caused this move here to be so violent because we tested this area so many times at the 1490 with bottoming tails. Okay, that being said, I would expect that any bounces after this, right, are going to get stopped possibly right up in here, just under, just under the 1500 because these lows at the 1490 area were defended so staunchly by the bulls and then the market cracked down through it. So we probably go a little bit lower, and then when we do turn, there should be a violent rally back to this high 1400 area, which is probably going to get a lot of people thinking, oh, everything's fine, we're going right back up, but I don't think that's the case at this point. I think that there's too much damage done to the charts, and the trend for now is probably going to be down. All right, that being said, how about some names? What should you play in this bull and bear market? Well, first of all, the 
plays on the downside are a little bit harder to come by because a lot of the stuff has already moved a lot. So you don't want to be chasing that stuff down. However, there is still some stuff out there that we're showing. Uh, a lot of these names are discussed in our newsletter every day, which is available for only $20 a month at shadowtrader.net or redoption.com under the listing Shadow Trader Pro, which is on the left-hand side, all the way at the bottom on redoption.com. All right. Uh, Sanderson Farms. These are all weeklies that I'm looking at. This looks like it's about to drop off the cliff and make another little bit of a move lower to at least the uh, $30 area. Skechers, which is in the uh, apparel footwear space. I'm seeing trend line break possibly here, right? Skechers probably wants to move a bit lower. Um, MOLX also on the weeklies, just starting to roll. I think any bounce here is probably playable. It's already broken the downtrend. It probably wants to do the old fill up the triangle move here to sub 25 any minor bounce here to the back side of the trend line is probably playable to the short side uh, Meg which is in the publishing sector these stocks are pretty much dead you look at the monthly it's probably gonna go a bit lower I like stocks that base like this and then break later it's basically like an IBD play in reverse um, and I'll also give you LDK which is solar this company actually has good earnings and it's not really like speculative crap like some of these solar companies whatever However, this appears to me that it's just going to be one of these IPO jobs where it opens here and goes super strong. Notice the stock went from like 25 to 85 or whatever up to, the, up to 76, excuse me, 20, 20, uh, 22 to 76. Right now it's completely lost itself. And look at the 61.8. Right? It broke way below it. Now you're bouncing back to where that 61.8 retracement or, or uh, Fibonacci was, right? Look at the low here, $37. I wouldn't be surprised. If you lose this low here at $37, this stock has huge momentum, big beta. This is probably going back down here to sub 30. So I like this one short as well. On the long side, one of the only sectors that we're seeing that's holding up all right is medical. Stocks such as United Therapeutics, UTHR, OSIP, very, very strong, holding up pretty good. Uh, this CBD, which is Covance, beautiful chart, right? COO Cooper Companies, this is something you may be interested in, kind of a bounce play. Look at the weeklies. Every time it comes into this area, one, two, you get very, very strong move, at least playable back to the upside. And look what the stock's doing on the daily. What you do is you start out with a bigger time frame like that, and you say, oh, this might be a play for a bounce. You know, maybe a counter trend, really no trend. It's just it's a, a bounce play basically off this area. And then you look down into the smaller time frame on the dailies, and what do you see? Inverted head and shoulders, right? Making this right shoulder with two bottoming tail hammers on the dailies. That's the type of thing I'd be looking for to kind of surprise all the bears that knocked it down so far. Uh, ZOLL, which is Zol Med. Possibly setting up, but I'd wait on this one. Uh, HCR. Also looks very, very strong. Manor Care in healthcare. There's also a couple of names in uh, defense, such as Rockwell Collins. That looks very, very strong. And Lockheed Martin. Oops, LMT. Right? Both very, very strong. And that's about it. Uh, Chems. This one. UAPH. That's uh, agricultural chems. Probably fertilizer. As we know, these stocks have pretty, been pretty strong, and this one looks like it's still not ready to stop. Looks pretty good. However, that being said, remember, these stocks only when the market shows signs of a bounce. When we, know, when we can honestly say that on an hourly chart on the S&P, a higher low has been put in, a higher low that holds on the hourlies. Remember, you need it to hold at least on this hourly time frame. So far, we don't have that. When we do get it, some of those aforementioned names might be the place to look for the long side. When it does happen, the Shadow Trader Pro Focus Report is going to talk about it. You can be sure. We'll have it in our commentary if we see this bottoming action happen. So far, we haven't. If you haven't yet checked us out, remember, it's 20 bucks a month, shadowtrader.net. You can get free samples of it. If you are not a subscriber, you can check out back issues by sending an email to focusreport at shadowtrader.net. Ask politely, and some samples will be sent to you. 
on behalf of myself and the entire Shadow Trader team in beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and of course, as always, from all the good people in Chicago, Illinois, at Think or Swim, I wish you good trading and good night.